Hello and welcome, I'm back and I really hope you didn't miss me too much because I miss you. I couldn't sleep thinking about you all night long. I know you did as well, so I'm here again to provide the highest quality content on all topics around Python for Finance. In this video I will guide you through building an intraday stock price database with Python and a bit of SQL. So why this video or what is the obstacle? There is simply no free data source for intraday stock prices. But why finance is able to pull the last 7 days of intraday data? So the idea is to write a Python script populating an SQL database with intraday price data and just run it on a daily basis. After some time you will have a lot of data which you can then use to analyze. Tiny challenge, the script has also take care of that you are only populating the database with data which is not in yet. All right, let's get started. As you see, we need some libraries. Why finance to get intraday price data? Pandas for data handling. Create engine from SQL Alchemy to connect to SQL and time delta from daytime for daytime manipulations. Next, I'm going to set up an engine to interact with SQL using the imported create engine function. And in this video, I'm working with SQL Lite, so I'm defining it here and give my database a name. I'm just calling that intraday underscore db dot db. So again, with this engine, I can interact with my SQLite database. Next, we need data. So I'm using YF's download function and provide the asset here. Normally, I would take a stock here, but as today is no trading day, it's Good Friday today, I'm showing it for the Bitcoin as kind of a proof of concept here. Of course, it is also working with stocks, but you wouldn't get any new data here. So I'm showing it for the Bitcoin for today, but keep in mind, it is also working for stock if you are within a trading day. So we are starting the data poll today minus seven days. Why seven days? Because that's the max range you can go back here, right? So I'm using pandas to daytime to create a timestamp of today and I'm just subtracting seven days from it using the time delta function, which I imported here. Okay, so today minus seven days and very important, the interval is one minute as this is the most granular interval. So with that, we are pulling one minute granular price data for the Bitcoin. So as you see, we're getting roughly 10 carry rolls starting in the end of March going until now. So if I would execute this line in one minute, I would get a new row here containing the most recent open, high, low, close volume data for Bitcoin. All right. Now I'm just going to import this data frame as it is currently into our database. So I can do that by using to SQL and give the table I want to create here. So this table or this data frame I want to store in my database and uh, in the database you're using tables to store data. So I have to give it a table name, just calling that Bitcoin USD underscore one minute. And have to provide my engine. And with that I'm storing this table in my database via the table name Bitcoin USD underscore one minute. So you see a table has been created containing 9.6k rows. So let's double check and use pandas read SQL function. Provide select star from Bitcoin USD underscore one minute. So this is simply selecting all columns from this table and provide the engine. So as you see now we're just getting nearly the same data frame as you saw before with the difference that the date time is a column and not the index, which I recommend to design like this. Okay, so this is the table we have currently stored in the database. Now let's move on to what is the challenge now. Let's say you wanna store new data, right? So you would execute this once again, right? So I'm doing that right now. So I'm pulling new data again. 
get rid of this line because we don't need it anymore. And then if I check out the data frame now, I have data until this timestamp. But all the previous data you see here is already stored in my database, right? So I have data until 10.34 here, right? I have data until 10.36 here as two minutes have passed. Now we have to take care of that when importing new data. So we only want to import those two new rows into our database, right? So how can we do that? We can do that by querying the database, pull the maximum date from the database, which would be this one here. So the max value of the date time column. And then we would just filter the new data for only those rows which aren't contained in the database and then import those two new rows. So let's pull the max date using pandas read SQL. And now you have to uh, create a query, which is pulling the max value for that row. That is quite straightforward. Select max date time. That's the column name from table. So from BTC USD underscore 1M and provide the engine. So you see, we're getting 1034 as we saw, because this is the maximum date. So I only want to have this value here. So we have to do some uh, indexing here. So I'm pulling values, then I'm getting it as an array. Then I'm indexing for the first one. And then I'm indexing again to get only the date as a string here, right? So with that, I have my max date and I can store that in a, let's say, variable here. So max date. So this will look like this. And then I can use it to filter my new rows. So I'm taking my data frame. So this is containing my new data. And I'm just filtering my index of that data frame for being larger than the max date from the database, which is 1034. So this is looking like this, df index larger than my max state. So as you see, now we are only getting the rows which are not yet in the database, 10, 35, and 10, 36 here. So we can call that new rows and then simply import those new rows to our database or to our table in the database. So to SQL, define the table, Bitcoin USD, one minute. and then provide the engine. And if that table exists, very important, if it exists, then I wanna append it to that table. And we also wanna have a feedback, how many rows have been imported. So I'm just taking the length of that data frame. So that would be two because two rows here and print it. So print length and then X rows have been imported. So I'm doing a string transformation to that integer here plus have been imported, right? So once I'm executing that, I'm getting feedback two new, two new rows have been imported. Yeah, that's new rows have been imported. And that's it. So whenever you're executing this whole script, you don't have to take care of anything here, right? Because it's always checking what is the max value in the database. And then it is only importing rows, which are above that max value. So let's test it again. So let's pull again, df. Now we're going until 1041. This one we don't need. Then we are pulling the max date. Let's confirm that max date is 1036 because we imported those two new rows. And then we are filtering for the new rows and then import them. And now we see four new rows have been imported. So 
that's basically it for the database. So you can just run the script every single day and then you will have a lot of intraday data with the time. So if you wanna bring this to the next level, you can also schedule this script every single day um, or maybe even multiple times a day and you have a database containing intraday price data, all right? Now, let me show you what's the problem for taking your stock here. So let's say I wanna download for Tesla. So first we wanna create a new table here in our database, of course, Tesla, one minute. Yeah, of course, provide the engine. Then we have created a new table for Tesla. And now we are pulling the max date, which is, of course, you have to change that to Tesla one minute here, which is the sixth. So yesterday, uh, four o'clock, then you filter new rows and you will see that you are simply getting no, no new rows because Tesla is not traded since then, right? And this is the maximum date. So you already have all new rows stored in the database. Anyhow, you can still run this. Just be careful with the names here, but you will import zero new rows, right? But this will get rows when you are within a trading day or you're running this on a Tuesday is the next trading day, I assume. So as said, I think very cool thing to schedule that on a daily base or maybe twice a day and build up a nice intraday stock price database. So I hope you liked this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.